Hello, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our King, our Savior. It is great to be able to preach the Word of God this uh, great evening at this great church. Before I get into the Word of God, I do want to give honor where honor is due. I want to give honor to my pastor, which is also known as my dad. I give him honor for letting me be able to speak to a great congregation. I give honor to my mom and my family that is here and that everybody else that are here. I give you honor in Jesus' name. Uh, but today I want to be preaching on uh, different seasons of life that we go through. Uh, as many of you might know, in North America, we have different uh, type of weather that we face, that we go through. We have the, the season of summer, we have the season of winter, and we have the season of spring and fall. And as you live in North America, we, we learn how to survive through every season. We've learned that in summer, we got to make sure that our car has AC on and we can move in our bed, in our room, the windows are up and we can get some fresh air. We have learned how to survive in winter. We have survived. We have learned that we got to put blanket on and make sure that our car heat works and, and to stay out of the cold. And we have learned how to survive through spring and fall in North America. And those that might be outside of North America, maybe in East Africa, maybe they have the different seasons that they go through as uh, different weather because they might not have the same weather as we do. But I feel God telling me to, to, t to tell somebody uh, tonight on this great day that no matter what season you might be going through, you have to trust God that he can bring you out. And in life, the transition we go through as, as kids, as they get older, they go to school and the parents send them to school and, and they get houses and they move out, they go to college. And, and in life, there's a season of everything, but in everything, God wants you to know that he can bring you out. you got to keep the faith and you've got to keep going. So with all that being said, I don't want to take a lot of time uh, today, but I do want to read in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. Uh, it tells us the classes is the book of the Bible says the preacher is the book of, of a preacher and uh, I want to read some verses today on Ecclesiastes chapter 3 we're going to start from verse number 1 we're going to go down to verse uh, number 8 Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born a time to die a time to plant, a time to pluck out that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rain and a time to screw. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. And for the last verse, verse number eight, a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. From this short moment I have today, I want to talk about a different life, different life of season. A different life of season. The Bible let us know, it, it, it lists every type, not every season, but it lists the, the seasons that are common to man, a season that everybody might be able to face, a season that everybody goes through that we might not be able to change. It goes to verse number one and says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I want to let somebody know that no matter, no matter what season that you might be facing, no matter what season you might be going through as an individual, because the reality is everybody is going through a different season. In reality, when there's a group of students in the classroom, not all those students are going through the same thing. Some of those students go back home to a broken home, to homes that the parents don't love each other, to homes that the parents might be divorced. But also they, and there's some other students that go home to a great home where they got food on the table, where they got clothes on their back, and where they can move and, and be able to, to have a great time. So in life, even in churches all around across the world, everybody might be sitting in the same building, in the same, in the same place, but that doesn't mean that they are going through the same season. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says that in every season there is a purpose under heaven. I want to let somebody know that no matter what season you are in, no matter what season you are going to, no matter what season that you're coming out of, you have to understand that there is a purpose. There is a reason. There, there is a reason why you're going through the season. And the Bible lists a lot of seasons that I'm going to be describing and trying to, trying to, do, to give you the definition or the meaning behind it. 
The Bible says there's a time to be born, a time to die, and there's a time to be born and a time to die. In, in, in life, God gives everybody an opportunity, a chance. But when there's a time to, to be born, when, when you have to look at the time that you were born and the time that you died, the great thing about the life between is that God gives you what we call a free will, which means the time that you were born to a time that you are going to die in that between. See, God just gave you a life. But in between that time, you have the opportunity to love Him and serve Him and make Him your everything. In that time, God gives you time, God gives you season, God gives you everything that you need between that time for you to make up your mind. That's why some people, it is so hard for them to come to God. And the time to born, and they were not taught a, a Bible study, they were not taught the love of God. So in that time between, it's so hard for them to understand who God is. And that's why most of the time, they might go through something that is difficult, something that is hard, something that might push them to know who God is. So, so when you see somebody that is struggling, when you see somebody that might not have it together like you do, it's not for you to look down on them and, and feel like they, they're more less than you. But you have to understand that they might be going through a season that God is pushing them forward so they can understand His love and understand His mercy and understand who God is. But the Bible let us know there is a time to be born and there is a time to die for all of us. And between those times, we get to make decisions or work jobs and, and where we want to live, who we, who we marry, and what type of car we drive and how we live life. You have the choice in between the time you were born and the time to die to make up your mind of what you are going to do with the time that you were given. The Bible goes down to verse number 2 to verse number 3 and it says the time to kill and the time to heal. The Bible let us know that there is a time to be able to kill some stuff and there is a time to be able to heal some stuff. And I've been preaching to you, I'm not encouraging you to get out of here and go kill some people. No, that's not what the Bible is talking about. Sometimes in killing, it doesn't mean necessarily mean people. It can be a bad habit. It can be something that is not of God. It can be sin. So when the Bible says that there's a time to kill things, it's not just killing people. There's things in our life that we have to kill spiritually. The things that might, not, might be drawing you away from God, things and people and places and things that get away from God, those things you have to kill before it grow. Yes. I heard a story one time that, that that if there's a little lion and you don't kill it while it's little, when that lion is bigger and, and, and it got it got it's huge, that lion might tear you apart because you never understood how to get rid of it at a young age. And it, it, that's the same way with sin. It is the same way with things that are not of God. When we let a little happy, the little things that might not be of God, when we let that thing grow, that thing might end up killing us because we didn't understand to get rid of it. We didn't understand that we got to get rid of sin. I'm telling you today that if there is something in your life that is not of God, you've got to get rid of it because if you don't, that thing might get rid of you and that's not what we want in the church. That's not what God designed for his kingdom. God created people so we can multiply. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says that it was not good for a man to be alone. So the Bible says that when Adam went to sleep, mm -hmm. that he was asleep and he couldn't feel nothing. So out of his womb, out of his side, the Bible says that God created a helper. And that's why a woman is called a womb man because a woman came out of a man's womb. So when you understand that we were meant to multiply, we were meant to, to multiply the whole world, and there might be some things that might ruin you for not multiplying. That's why in churches we don't we don't believe in same gender because same gender the multiply. A woman and a woman that's not multiply. Mm -hmm. A man and a man that's not multiply. That's why we, we preach against it because God, his division, his his majesty, he was created man and a woman so they can become together. Yes. So they can multiply. That's why Adam. God gave them a helper because that way they can multiply the whole world. Yeah. That's why transgender and becoming what you are not meant to be. It is against God. God did not create a man to be with a man. God did not create a woman to be with a woman because those two, they not multiply. Yeah. But when God puts a woman and a man and they get married in the holy church, they can multiply. Yeah. They, can be, they can manifest kids that can become world changers. Yes. And yes. that's what we preach against because the word 
what they try to do, they try to turn this Bible mm -hmm. and, and try to make it something like. Mm -hmm. Well, see, I believe they can do whatever they want. No, it's not about what they want. Mm -hmm. It's not how they feel. Mm -hmm. It's about what the Word of God says. Yes. And if the Word of God says this, I'm going to be on this side. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get to choose and pick of why, how I feel. Mm -hmm. There's different type of emotions. Mm -hmm. And emotion can lead you to the wrong direction. You don't go back of your emotion. Mm -hmm. You go all back of the word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in verse number four, a time to weep and a time to laugh. The Bible let us know that there is a season of what we go through in life that, that some people might be weeping, crying, and there might be other people that might be dancing mm -hmm. and laughing. But the reality is those people that are weeping, they might just lose like a loved one. Mm -hmm. Or they might be going through something that is difficult. They might, they might live in a society where they don't feel welcome. They might live somewhere that they don't feel loved by their family. They don't feel loved where they go to. They don't, they don't feel loved. So all the time they have, they have this thing in their heart and building up depression and the anxiety of not knowing who they are. So now they're over here weeping. And then you got this other type of group, this category, where there's people that are dancing and laughing because life is going great. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you that no matter what season you are going through, you got to be reminded that there might be somebody that has it worse than you. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says pray for your enemies. Mm -hmm. Pray for those that persecute you. Pray, pray for those that, that, that might not even love you because no matter what season you are going through, you got to remember there are people that don't have it like you do. There are people that are going through a worse time. There are people that don't have nothing to eat. So when you are laughing and dancing, which is great, I love it, but you also got to be having a constant in your mind that there might be somebody else that might be going through it. And if I don't help them out, they might die where they are. There's a time to weep, and there's a time to dance, and there's a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away a stone, and a time to gather stones together. The Bible let us know that there is times that when you got the other stones, the Bible, that reminds me of a story in the Bible with the woman was caught in adultery, and, and, and this man, this, this group of men, they caught her in adultery, and the Bible says that they started picking up stones ready to stone her. And they asked Jesus, what do, you, what do we do with this woman? And the Bible let us know that Jesus wrote down on the ground like he did not heal them. And they kept asking him questions. I love what Jesus answered it. He said, if any, if any among you, which means if any of you here that's about to stone this woman, mm -hmm. if he haven't committed a sin, I want you to be the first one to throw a stone. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says from the elders to the youngest, mm -hmm. all the men started dropping their stones and they walked away yes. because they understood that all of them made mistakes, mm -hmm. all of them are not worthy of God's grace, all of them are made failures. But what Jesus was trying to teach us is, if somebody is caught in sin, if somebody is caught doing something wrong, it is not right for you to throw a stone. Mm -hmm. Because what you don't realize is they are caught in sin. You throwing stones is not helping them. Mm -hmm. You throwing stones at them is actually destroying them. Mm -hmm. So when you throw stones at somebody that made mistakes, you are spiritually and physically killing them. That's why the Bible says pray for those that make mistakes. The Bible says that if you have an art, go to your brother and make it right. Because it is not right to throw stones, but it is right to pray for them. Yes. And, and put them in the hands of God. But God can deal with them better than you can deal with them. Yeah. And, and the Bible goes on to say in verse number 6, a time to get and a time to lose. The Bible let us know that there is going to be a time in, in season of where we get and where we lose stuff. And it can only remind me of growing up as kids, we go through different seasons as those that are older than us. Mm -hmm. As a kid, you lose, you, you, you worry about losing a toy that you were playing with in the house. When there's an adult somewhere look, wondering how they're going to pay the bills and, and how, they, like, how their family are, are, are broken apart. So you have kids that are going through a different season because of their knowledge of what they had in their mind. They're not thinking about what, what they orders or what they're thinking about. They're thinking about going outside and playing. And you've got elders in the church that are thinking about how things gotta have to get right. So in life, the Bible says there's a time to give and there's a time to lose. You have to understand that there's gonna be a season in your life 
that you might lose some stuff mm -hmm. and, or that you might get some stuff. That's why you have to, to be careful what season you are. And, and the greatest thing about different life of season is that we don't go through a season for no reason. Mm -hmm. That's what the very first scripture in the class is. It says to everything there is a purpose. Yes. Which means if you're in a season of getting, which means if you're in a season of losing, which means if you're in a season of dancing and whipping, there is a purpose. There is a reason why you're going through it. And you don't just go through the season so you can remain the set. No, what God is trying to teach you, though, is if you go through the season, you got to come out stronger than you were. you got to come out better than you were. you got to come out wiser than you were. you got to come out thinking that you can do more for God than you were. No matter what season that you are going through, you have to understand that I'm going to learn from this. If I'm in the season of whipping, I'm going to learn that I'm going to learn that God can get me out of whipping. And if I'm in the season of death in the morning, I'm going to learn that I still have to pray for those yes. that are going through a season that I kept out of. Yes. Every season, there is a purpose yes. of Amen. that season. Amen. The Bible let us know that there were three men, Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach. Mm. The Bible let us know that there was a king in that time. He, he told us three young men, he said, I, when, when they hear the, the horn sound, that he needs them to bow down to the false image, to the image. Mm -hmm. And Meshach and Shadrach and, and Abednego looked at each other. They said, we will not bow down mm -hmm. to this image. The, the greatest thing about this great young man is they understood that we're not going to bow down because our God yes. is going to deliver us. Amen. And the Bible says that if it, even if not, yes. if, even if God don't deliver them, they're still going to trust God. Yes. Can I tell you that you might, you might be going through the hardest season of your life and you're losing family love everywhere across the world and you, and you don't know how you're going to pay your bills and you don't know what's going on with your children. Can I tell you that even if God don't deliver you, He is still good of your yes. He's still good of your prayer. Yes. He's, still, he's still worthy of every hand clap. Yes. He's still worthy of every shot. Yes. God is still worthy of all your prayers. Pray, even if he don't deliver you because God even if he don't deliver you that doesn't make him any less powerful he is still powerful all by himself the Bible says there's no other God beside him God got the power he got the authority everything is in God so even if Bishak and Benigo and Shireh they have the faith that even if God don't deliver them he's still worthy of every praise and no matter what season that you are going through you got to understand that even if God don't deliver me out of it, yes. he's still good and he's merciful. Amen. The Bible says in verse 7, I'm hurry. It says the time to reign and the time to sow and the time to keep silence and the time to speak. Yeah. In life, there is time that you you can talk, we, we family gather together, you can speak. Mm. But there's also a time that you have to be silent. I love what they do sometimes when, when somebody passes away or they go through something hard. Somebody will stand up and say, we'll go take a, a moment of silence. Yeah. And they just quiet, silent, because it is that moment right there, it is a season of silence. Mm -hmm. and, and that moment, in a, in a season of silence, what, what's great about it is when people are talking and communicating, doing all this crazy stuff, they don't think like they're supposed to be thinking. Yeah. But when you sit down and you're silent, you get to thinking of what God wants to do in your life. Yes. Can I encourage you tonight that there is going to be a season in your life where you might not be able to understand what's going on, but if you just silent mm -hmm. and trust God, okay. He's going to speak to you. The Bible says that God speaks to, 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 the, to things that are not loud and, and moving. But it is those moments that you are confused in your life and you don't know what tomorrow holds. And you, and you think about taking your life away, that you just sit there silent mm -hmm. and you let God speak to you and kill you out. Amen. Amen. There's a time to speak mm. and there's a time to be silent. Mm -hmm. Verse number 8, there's a time to love and the time to hate. The Bible let us know and, and, and preachers and, and, and great people, they, they keep up with preachers, love, love, that's awesome, that's great. But there's also a time to hate. And the Bible does not talk, that, that wasn't saying that you have to hate people. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand that some things are not people. Yeah. Some things are things or, or actual beings and things that we're not supposed to be carrying around in our bags and everything. Sometimes. When the Bible says kill and, and hate, mm. it is not talking about individuals, it's not talking about each other. Mm. But you've got to get in your knowledge that there is things that you have to kill in your life. Mm. 
There are things that you have to hate because if you don't, the things will get rid of you and stay. So the Bible says there's a time to love. And, and, and that's a perfect season, but I believe in my spirit that, that it's always a good time to love people. Mm. It's always a great time to be kind mm. and to show people that you care for them. That's always, that's a season that don't get out the way. Mm. A season to love people don't get out the way. You don't get to make your own decision and your own decision and say, well, the Bible says there's a season to hate, so I'm going to hate everybody. Mm. If that, that's not what it's talking about. He's not talking about handing people a season and then you go to you translate to a season of black people. No. Loving people is a season that's always on. Yes. Loving people is a season that don't get out the way. It's not a season of a schedule that gets out the schedule. But loving people and being there for people is a season that is forever. It's eternal. You have to love people. You have to show kind. Mm -hmm. And there's things that you have to hate. You have to hate sin. You have to hate the devil himself. You have to hate things that don't get you close to God. You have to hate things that are drawing you away from the love of God. Those are the things that you have to hate. Yes. And the Bible let us know that there's a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. The Bible let us know that there's a time of war. And as we know, humans, and, and, and there's wars that went before us, and there was people killing each other. That was a season of war. And, and the Bible let us know that there's they, a season of peace. They cannot tell you that everything that happens just don't just happen. God has his own will. God has his own schedule, you would say. God has everything in his hand. So when everything happens, it's not happening because God is surprised. I remember teaching one class, this youth class one time, and I was telling them that, that Jesus, he didn't just wake up and coronavirus was in the world. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't just wake up out of his sleep and, and there was racism and people were backbiting each other, people were hating each other. Jesus don't sleep. The Bible let us know that he don't sleep nor slumber, which means when we go to sleep, Jesus is watching all over us. So when coronavirus came into the world, Jesus didn't, he didn't, he wasn't surprised for him. Mm -hmm. He knows the beginning to the end. He is Alpha. He is Omega. He is the beginning and the end. So when things happen inside of this world, what you have to understand that there is a God that is outside this planet mm -hmm. that can look from beyond and see what's happening. He knows what's going to happen 20 years from now on. He knows what happened to you when you was a kid and nobody loved you. He knows what you are going to go through 10 years from now. That's why in everything the Bible says in Colossians, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, that in everything give faith, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Which means in every season, in every battle, in every trial, you have to understand that I'm going to give faith to God because He is worthy of every faith. He is worthy of every prayer. Yes. Because in every season, you've got to give God Amen. the glory. Amen. And I'm getting ready to close, but in every season, there is a purpose yes. under the heaven. Yes. The Bible let us know that David went through a season by himself in the field. <laughs> David was a young man that loved God. He loved worshiping and praise. And the Bible let us know that when his brother was in the house, David was in the field worshiping <laughs> and praising. <laughs> Can I tell you that the only way you're going to get through out of your season if you find a place to kneel down and pray, mm -hmm. it's like, God, give me the strength to get out of what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Because David understood that praying and worship and prayer and casting trust into the word of God and who God is, is going to get through the season of where his brother was going to have rejoicing and doing great things. And David was by himself in the field of killing lions and bears. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, in every season, there's going to be a season that you feel like you're all by yourself. But when you're all by yourself, that's a great season to find a relationship with God and make yourself a better person before the King of Kings. Amen. And today I want to encourage you, no matter what season you are going through, no matter what type of season, it might be a great one, it might be a bad one, it might be a whipping one, a dancing one, crying, whatever season that you might be going through as individual. Mm -hmm. Because not everybody goes through the same season. Yeah. But you personally, Whatever season that you are going through, understand that God is there for you. 
and he will bring you out. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, Amen. we thank you, Jesus, that you have given us the opportunity to hear the word of God. Amen. Lord, we thank you that we got the knowledge that in every season there is a purpose, God. Amen. God, I thank you for these great people that are listening before me and those that are watching online. God, I pray that no matter what season an individual person is going through, I pray that you will give them a comfort, God. I pray, God, that you give them joy unspeakable. God, I pray that you will help them to get out their hard season. God, I pray for those that might be going through a season of weeping. God, I pray that they will start dancing and laughing again. God, I pray for, we pray for our enemies, God. The, the Bible says we got to pray for those that persecute us. And God, at this moment, I pray for everyone right now, Jesus. I pray that in every season we go through, that we can acknowledge how great you are and how merciful you are. God, I pray for those that might be getting out of this season and might be going to a new season. God, I pray for that new season that it will bring blessings, God. That it will bring joy, God. That it will bring opportunity for them to become better. And God, at this moment, we thank you for a great day. We thank you that we know the word of God. We pray for those that don't. We pray for those that don't know who you are that they can come to a knowledge that this world is going to die wicked but God, that we got to find who you are and love you. And I pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.